the compositional layers of the Earth. Scientists have only understood the compositional the compositional layers of the Earth. Scientists have only understood the composition of the Earth for about the past hundred years. It wasn't until the modern seismograph was invented that they had the tools to explore the different layers of the Earth. The crust. The outermost layer of the Earth is called the crust. Scientists have known all about the crust for much longer than the other layers because it's where humans live. The crust is made up of rocks covered by soil. Igneous rocks such as granite and basalt make up most of the crust, but there are also sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. The crust is by far the thinnest layer of the earth. Under the oceans, it's about seven kilometers deep. Continental crust is between 30 and 70 kilometers deep. The crust is not one complete layer like the skin of an apple. Instead, the crust is made up of about 12 tectonic plates. These plates float on the mantle below and are always moving. Millions of years ago, all of the land on Earth combined into one supercontinent called Pangaea. Over time, the crustal plates moved apart to form the seven continents known today. Pangaea wasn't the first supercontinent. Scientists estimate there have been at least three supercontinents formed and broken apart in Earth's history. Another supercontinent will form someday far in the future. Currently, North America and Asia are moving closer together at a rate of about 2.5 centimeters a year. The mantle. The mantle is the layer below the crust. It is the thickest layer on Earth, spanning 3,000 kilometers. Like the crust, the mantle is solid, but, it is but its silicate rocks are softer than the rocks of the crust. Their consistency is similar to silly putty and over millions of years, the solid rock flows in convection currents that push the tectonic plates of the crust around the Earth. Rock heated by the high temperatures of the outer core below the mantle slowly rise to the top of the mantle. When the rock cools, it falls back down to the bottom of the mantle. The heat from the mantle melts rocks within the crust above it. The melted rock forms the magma that fills volcanoes around subduction zones and hot spots. Magma in the crust also creates new oceanic crust at mid-ocean ocean ridges. While the mantle provides the heat to melt rocks, it is not liquid. The mantle is made up of soft, solid rock that flows in convection currents about as fast as your fingernails grow. Surprisingly, the mantle contains water. A lot of water. The mantle is too hot to hold liquid water but the components of water, hydrogen and oxygen, are trapped as hydroxide ions within the rocks of the mantle. Scientists believe the mantle holds more water than all of the Earth's oceans. Unfortunately, we can't get to the water because we don't have the technology to drill into the mantle yet. The outer core. Below the mantle is the outer core. This layer is about 2,250 kilometers thick and is filled with liquid iron and nickel. It is the only liquid layer within Earth. The iron and nickel are liquid because they have melted in, in the intense heat of the outer core. Ing Lehmann, a seismologist from Denmark, discovered the outer core. A seismologist is a person who studies earthquakes. By looking at the way earthquake waves moved through the Earth, Lehman was able to determine that the outer core was liquid. Seismic waves move much more slowly through liquids than solid rocks. They are also reflected back to the source wave instead of moving through it in a straight line as they do through solid materials. The inner core. The inner core lies within the outer core. Around 1,200 kilometers thick, the inner core is even hotter than the outer core. In fact, at about 7,000 degrees Celsius, the inner core is even hotter than the surface of the sun. However, the iron and nickel within it are solid because of the high pressure exerted on them by the outer layers of the earth. Lehman was able to protect, predict this based on the fast, straight seismic waves she observed passing through the inner core. How did Lehman track the speed of seismic waves in the center of the Earth without being there? By measuring the amount of time it took waves to move from one seismic station to another, she could determine how fast the waves were traveling. Comparing the results from stations around the world created a picture of the center of the Earth. Scientists continue to study and debate the different layers of the Earth today. 
The more technology improves, the more information scientists can gather about the layers of the Earth. Someday, scientists may even be able to travel to the outer and inner core.